Every year, close to 800,000 children go missing around the world. And many of these children end up as sex slaves. UNICEF projects there are more than 2 million children trapped in sex slavery. It's organized crime that procures, sells, and exploits these children and is a multi-billion dollar business worldwide. India is the poisonous hub of child sex slavery. End trafficking in India and the worldwide epidemic in human suffering caused by this hideous crime will be greatly reduced. Sex trade operators in India procure their victims from Nepal and Pakistan, and then they ship them to Delhi and Mumbai through Uttar Pradesh. Now, the business has expanded in India and become much more mainstream. It operates from residences, marketplaces, malls, massage parlors, and in nightclubs, and many deals are struck online. In 2012, I had the opportunity to make a dent in the global epidemic of child sex slavery. There was 21 of us that visited Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia, to ride our bicycles across the country and visit shelters that house victims of sex slavery. Our goal was to raise funds and awareness for Together One Heart, a foundation that was created by activist Somali Mam and actress Annalyn McCord. This foundation is a non-government, non-partisan, non-religious organization that helps women and girls who have been victimized by human trafficking and sex slavery. Small Imam is a hero for her work as a humanitarian, resulting in saving the lives of thousands of young sex slaves. On the first day of our ride, we departed our hotel and we rode through the city and into the countryside. It was well beyond 40 degrees, but we were inspired by our purpose. We took in the beautiful temples as we rode alongside the mighty Mekon River, passing thousands of homes built on sticks. There was children everywhere, and we received countless hellos. The reality was that many of these children would be trafficked by members of their own family due to acts of survival. We heard stories of girls being tortured in underground brothels, for not pleasing a client, one girl's face was horribly burnt with a blowtorch. Another girl was whipped with barbed wire. Other tortures involved electrocution, sleep deprivation, starvation, and beatings. Water buffalo grazed alongside the river. I felt that this ride stood for something important. When I saw how gruesome life could be for children, it made me look deeper into the purpose of my own life, and I knew that my life would never be the same. Our destination that first day was a center called Tom D. This center housed over 100 girls who had been rescued from sex slavery. <clears throat> Upon approaching the, the center, many of us were exhausted from the heat, but we knew we were about to meet victims who were very excited to meet us. The center was modest, clean, and orderly. And it was during lunch that I felt a great love pouring out from the girls. But they also exuded an aura of sadness due to so much physical, mental, and emotional pain. The room went silent when a girl named Shrey stood up to tell her story. Shrey was sold to a brothel at the age of seven by her mother. Her father had died when she was very young and her mother and five siblings were dirt poor. Now when the sex broker showed up at her village, she was sold and then taken to Phnom Penh where she was servicing up to 20 men a day that would use her little body for their pleasure. She endured rape and torture before finally making her escape at the age of 10. Today, Shrey shares her story to help others heal. Later on our trip, we would meet small Imam herself at a shelter. It was heavily protected by armed guards to ensure the girl's safety. I saw two plaques. American media icon Barbara Walters and Queen Latifah devoted their efforts towards this worthy cause. We were greeted by hundreds of rescued girls. 
Then a five-year-old stood up and explained how she was raped and forced into sexual acts in fear of being killed. As I listened to her story, I couldn't stop crying. That's when a group of young girls came to console me. I thought to myself, shouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> that ride was the experience of a lifetime and helped raise $122,000 to help victims heal and eventually integrate themselves back into society. I decided to do the ride again the following year, and I thought I knew what to expect. After another long, hot day of riding, we entered a new shelter, and it was there that I would see something that would be burned in my heart forever. We were greeted by countless Cambodian girls who had prepared an ancient dance to express their gratitude towards our efforts. I thought to myself, how gracious. Then I saw a Cambodian woman sobbing on her knees uncontrollably. That's when one of the riders came out of a dark cement room, screaming and crying, wrapping her arms around me, half paralyzed. I decided to enter the dimly lit room, and a girl of about six was shaking and crying in the corner, in an old pair of pajamas clinging onto a ragged white blanket for dear life. Through a Cambodian translator, she explained that she was gang raped by three men for two days. Then they beat her with their fists and feet, and then they broke both of her legs with sticks. I decided to approach the young girl, and to my amazement, she opened her heart to me. I hugged her like she was my own daughter, and I told her that everything would be okay. As we looked into each other's eyes, I felt a sense of calmness come over her. When I walked out of the room, I looked back, and she smiled at me. I nodded my head in sincere respect. You see, in Asia and Africa, many ignorant men believe that having sex with a virgin cures the HIV virus. Brothel, brothel owners completely exploit this misconception by sewing up a young girl's hymen and then selling her as a virgin for premium price. Many of the girls now suffer from the HIV virus and other sexually transmitted diseases as well. But there is help on the way for these girls. On a recent trip to Cambodia in 2016, I witnessed the tireless work ethic of Somali Mom and the Together One Heart Foundation. These amazing people care so passionately about the cause that they have now become global advocates and change makers in the fight against modern day sex slavery. May no mistake, this happens to boys as well. It's just not as prevalent. The ancient ritual of Bacha Bazi, literally boy play, has been revived in Afghanistan. In one case, a US militia leader was relieved of his duty due to having a boy sex slave chained to his bed. But you know what? I envision a world that is free of sex slavery, especially child sex slavery. But how do we make that happen? Firstly, we must be aware that this happens in many places in the world, probably in your own backyard. Secondly, let's use social media to create movements so that these victims can actually have a life. Thirdly, approaching all local governments that this must be stamped out. It's a must. I believe that this can be accomplished. If kidney transplants can be abolished in In India in just days, then why not sex slavery? I am determined to play my part. I know that I can make a difference. I know that you can make a difference. But most of all, I believe that if we all try together, the evil that is child sex slavery can be defeated. Are you with me? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.